Good morning and welcome to the garden. We haven't done an update film in quite a while so I asked Michelle to follow me out to the garden this morning and I uh, want to give you guys at home a little tour of our garden kind of give you an update of what Now <clears throat> generally this is where we plant all of our winter lettuce gardens in our bed right here. I didn't have anything planned, so we bought sweet potato slips and we planted them in this dirt. Now I think the sweet potatoes are gonna to tend to do pretty good in here because this is a sandy soil and in the summertime, it's gonna heat up real nice in here. Now I've gotta get in here and control some of this grass before the runners start to run and put a fertilizing down. I got a cassava plant right here. So we're gonna grow this cassava plant out along with all these sweet potato roots. Now I know what you're thinking. This is awful crowded in here. I know, but we're gonna give it a shot. This is our first time and we're just gonna see how it, how it does in here. Our onion plants that we had in here from last year's harvest is already bloomed and I'm waiting for the seed heads to, uh, to turn black and start to crack open. Then we can harvest all of these uh, Texas grano onions and then we can go ahead and start sprouting these about August and September into uh, seed trays. And then we'll plant these out in the, uh, around November and start getting that started for next year's onions. So those will be coming out real soon, as soon as these heads start to crack open. And I looked just the other day, let's see, we've got one starting to crack right there. You see those little black seeds just inside and pull that off. See those black seeds in there? We're just gonna wait for those to dry out. Yeah, it's pretty strong. I don't like the smell of the strong onions this early in the morning. But I got that on my hands. That'll be with me for the rest of the day. Our artichoke that we had over here, we showed you uh, a month ago, it's finishing up. And when it finishes up, all these uh, leaves on here kind of die off. But look at here, guys. Look at that beautiful bloom that started on that artichoke right there. We're gonna stand him up and we'll let the bees enjoy the pollen on that. Well, these are really probably the most beautiful bloom in the whole entire garden. And uh, this is green globe artichoke. And then these two right here are the uh, purple variety. And I can't remember at the time what the purple variety name is. We put in one little uh, cherry plant. I wanted it right by the garden gate door so you can walk in and not have to bend over and just enjoy these uh, little cherry tomatoes. But these are a uh, golden, like a sun sugar or some variety like that. We got one turn and that'll be our first tomato. He'll be ready probably today. We just got rid of some of the old uh, winter crops out of here last Saturday. And I came out right before the rains hit for the, for the week long rain event we had. And I put in, uh, I took out rutabagas and I put in these uh, lima beans. These are a bush Henderson variety. I got rocket some salad greens right here these seed pods they're finishing up and any day now i'll be able to come come along and harvest these pods and then crack those open and there's little seeds down in there and we collect those seeds and then we'll be done with that but just in one week's time seven days ago today I planted these lima beans. I got a nice stand in here. They're nice and thick. <clears throat> We're gonna fertilize these and get these going. Now beans, you don't have to fertilize with a high nitrogen. You want mainly your uh, uh, phosphorus um, and potassium to grow out your lima beans. They are a nitrogen fixer. They put nitrogen back in the ground. So when we get through with this, we can put in another crop that's a heavy nitrogen feeder. And uh, this crop will feed the, the next crop that we get. Now back behind you here, look on that back corner, 
We've got yellow Marconi peppers, and they are nice and big. Those plants look good, and those peppers down there really look good. We got those in cages, and we're going to train them up through the cages. And then we have three of the yellow varieties, and we're going to wait for these to turn yellow, and we're going to put these in the freezers, into freezer bags with our red Marconis. Right here is last year's red Marconi that I dug up and we kept in a bucket through the winter and then planted it back out in the spring. And if you didn't see that video, I invite you to go back and check that video out. We've already been harvesting green peppers off of this uh, two or three weeks ago. And uh, it seems to be, to, to be doing just, just fine, even though it was a transplant out of the garden, transplant back into the garden. And this is this year's red Marconis. And they seem to be catching up with the Marconi pepper that we that we saved through the winter. But I don't have any uh, any oppositions or any negatives to as far as a comparison to uh, comparing last year's peppers with this year's peppers. It took a while for these uh, new peppers to catch up, but they may catch up and surpass. But at least I had peppers on that last year variety, probably a month ahead of schedule. We had grew our broccoli out in here. If you uh, watched our broccoli video, I was really proud of the broccoli harvest we had. We left one plant that had a, a good head on it. So this is our sacrificial plant. Now it's starting to go to bloom, and then these blooms will, they'll shoot on up here, then they'll put off seed pods, just like those seed pods on those rocket plants I just showed you. And then we'll harvest seeds off of this hybrid variety. I know they're not going to come true. We're just going to play around with it and we're going to see if we can uh, selectively source um, some type of a good variation of a broccoli out of this. This is our tree tomato. We're training up on the trellis and look at there. We have got a tomato hornworm growing up on our tomato vine. We'll get rid of him. Make short work of that one. But our tomatoes, it won't be long before we start getting tomatoes off of this. We're going to come along. You see these leaves down here starting to turn brown. We'll snap these off, trim them up, and then we'll spiral the, the stem down on the ground by lowering this trellis right here. And we're going to keep these plants about this high so that we can harvest these tomatoes without having to reach too high to harvest or having to uh, bend down too low to harvest. We'll just let our trellis down and curl up our, our tomato vine right there. This is Anis Noir. Got these from Baker Creek. They seem to be doing okay. This was a replant because I lost the paste tomatoes that were right here. So these are a few weeks behind those over there. And we did that several times in the garden. I've got several places throughout the garden that, that uh, the tomato plants failed, but I'm going to get a summer variety. We're going to come back in here and we're going to plant more tomatoes that can take the heat a little bit better. Now over here we've got um, butter peas. They're starting to come up. They're a little bit slower than the butter beans, and that's all right as long as we get, a, uh, get them coming up, but they look like they're going to be a full stand. This will be our first year ever growing butter peas. We're going to put them in our bean sheller and shell them out. The shells on them look just like a butter bean shell, but they're more round like a pea. Pink eye purple holes in this bed right here. This is our Amish paste tomato. We got some uh, nice looking tomatoes. Look at the size of those tomatoes, guys. This one right here is actually starting to turn a little bit. We're not very far from a harvest. We, we wanted to plant a bunch of these and harvest out a bunch of paste tomatoes, but these are, uh, they get this dark blight or disease or something on the leaves. And then once, once they get that, the plant, the whole plant just suffers. So we'll probably end up harvesting these tomatoes and then this tomato will be pulled out because we don't want this to spread. And uh, I'm going to save the best seeds out of these tomatoes. And we're going to see if we can breed a variety that's kind of resistant to that. And we're just going to keep saving our best tomato seeds until we get something that, 
that tolerates whatever's going on right here that doesn't suffer from that. Sart, also from Baker Creek, Rolois, Sart Rolois. It's starting to look good. This was a late transplant. This is probably about a month behind the rest of those. Now right here, this is a, uh, this is from some of our saved seed. This is Mr. Stripey. The tomatoes are looking good, pretty decent. There's no disease on these. It look like these adapted well. We're gonna to continue to save seeds from this variety. And just see how well this one does for us. But Mr. Stripey has done very well this year. Now you're talking, I was talking to you about the blight that was on that paste tomato, but look at here at this black beauty. This is what I'm talking about. It gets that blight on it and then they just suffer all throughout. They don't ever do anything. The plants don't grow, but I had already had these tomatoes that had started and I didn't want to pull those off, but that looks like that's right. It is. Those are ready to pick. It's a sorry looking plant with some sorry looking tomatoes, but we're going to see what that tastes like. There's some peppers coming up here. I don't know what. Is that volunteer pepper? This is a volunteer pepper and that's poke salad. That'll come out of there. All right, then over here, this is yellow brandy wine. Another late planter. I got to get in here and I got to put another tomato clip on that one and clip it back to the to the vine. But that one looks good. Got some tomatoes coming along. This one also was about a month behind our other tomatoes. Another Anis Noir from Baker Creek. This plant's looking pretty good. And then I got some little army worms. These little army worms have been tearing us up this year. Or whatever kind of little caterpillar that is. But I'm gonna have to get out here with a, some type of spray and get these things back under control. They will just ruin a tomato plant in no time. They'll dig into the tomatoes and they'll eat uh, worm holes into the tomatoes. I hate those things. And over here, another Anis Noir. I had to come back and replant this one. This is yellow brandy wine again. Tomatoes are looking good. I see some caterpillar poop down there on that tomato, so we're gonna have to spray these today also. See right there, that's what I'm talking about. Look at here. They get in there and they dig holes into the tomatoes. See that little sucker right in there? Now I'm just gonna throw him out there because the chickens will be along shortly. They'll eat that tomato and they'll eat that, that caterpillar. But we're gonna make short work of that one. We'll get some neem oil out here in the garden and finally get these things under control. Now look at here, we've got Kellogg's breakfast and we've got one that's just starting to turn. Michelle, it's gonna be time to order the bait or get the bacon from the store and get us a BLT going. Mm -hmm. Well, we got that tomato that's starting to turn. I need to clip up this plant and it looks like I'm starting to get some of that blight up here on the leaves. So that probably, that plant probably won't last long. And then over here, I've got another, that says Black Beauty, I'm not sure. That might actually be a Black Beauty, but that plant looks pretty good. I had one uh, squash that died on me yesterday. I think the, that's the rest of that plant, but I think the um, squash vine borer got to it. But the rest of the plants, they look okay. I've got the summer squash here, Delicata. This is the honey boat variety. I've already harvested a few of these. They're over there curing, but those are looking pretty good. 
They didn't do as well as I'd hoped. I was hoping to get more squash off these two plants, but it won't be long. These will be finished up and they'll be coming out of here. We got some squash plants over there. They're still chugging along as long as the squash vine borers stay off of them. They probably got another week or two before the summer heat tears them up and we'll have to get these out of here and we're gonna replant this bed. Now right here is the pride of the garden. This has done better than anything we've got so far. This is our Ohio blue corn that we've got from uh, Haas Tools. And it's just starting to tassel out and it's over eight foot tall on those, uh, those tassels back there. And we're starting to get some, some silk showing where the ears are gonna develop. See that tassel coming out. And then usually when you start seeing the tassel, you look down the leaf joints and you'll start seeing corn like right here. That'll develop into a corn. You'll see little silts coming out here any day now. Here's some silks right here. I'm gonna show you, see how these tassels up here, how these little pollen grains are hanging down. I don't feel that we have enough pollen going around the garden to properly pollinate. So I'm just gonna drop those little uh, pollen grains right on top of those silks right there and let that pollinate. Give that a nice little brush. And then those po pollens will pollinate all those uh, corn silk and that'll cause each uh, kernel of corn on your corn has a, a silk. This one right here has got two coming on. I've got a corn here and a corn ear here growing. The pollen, the tassels are just starting to tassel out up there. We're gonna probably come back and hand pollinate some of these like you just saw me do. But our plan with this uh, Ohio blue corn is we're gonna harvest it. And we're gonna grind it into uh, corn flour and cornmeal and possibly even get some grits out of it. If we can locate anyone around that has a grist mill, we're still looking at getting a grist mill and uh, being able to grind our own corn flour and meals. Now, over here, we've got another dent corn that's got a little bit of a story. When we first moved here, our neighbor over there, his son, Keith, had given us a package of heirloom corn that had been in his family for over 50 years and saved and saved and saved. So with all their plantings, there probably was a named variety at one time. And then through cross pollination, they said these get up real tall, nice big ears. We put these seeds in the flower in, or in the freezer in a vacuum sealed bag that was not vacuumed sealed, it was just sealed. And uh, 2016, now look at here what we've got. We've got a good solid stand. It looks like every one of the kernels I planted have come up and that corn's looking good. We just planted this one week ago today. I've got this volunteer tomato. To, I elected to not take it out, but let the corn just kind of come up around it. Corn will be up here in a, in a couple of weeks. And then we're going to see if the tomato can uh, bear any fruit. We're just going to see what comes out of that. These are our purple fingerling potatoes. We harvested red potatoes that we had just in one row out of this end. These are starting to uh, finish up. I've already seen the blooms come and go. These will start dying any day now. And whenever they do start dying, then we can come in with our digging fork and start digging out our purple potatoes. We're gonna go big on the potatoes next year because potatoes is a staple crop. You can eat every day and it will sustain you. So we're excited to do more uh, with the potatoes next year. All right, that's what we've got going on in the garden right now. Our asparagus along the back fence is looking good. Hopefully it suppresses the, the weeds out of, the, uh, suppresses the weeds that are growing up in the asparagus beds. Now let's go ahead and take you on around and show you the, uh, oh, you, Michelle's killing me over here to show you the other sweet potato plants. Our sweet potato plants over here, they get more sun than those, probably an extra. Volunteer pepper. That is a cool jalapeno. That is a heatless jalapeno. 
I had saved that in a bucket from last year's grow and then just planted it out a couple weeks ago. Um, our sweet potatoes right here, these are Beauregard. They're starting to, uh, to run on us. They get way more sun than those in that bed that's over there that I first showed you. But look at those big runners that are starting to run. I gotta get in here and fertilize these. Um, low on nitrogen, high on phosphorus and potassium. And then right here is our uh, Cherokee tan pumpkin. Every year I try to plant at least a pumpkin somewhere, the little um, native variety. If you're not familiar with the Cherokee tan, there's another pumpkin variety that's real close to it called the Seminole pumpkin. This one's a totally different pumpkin. It tastes way different. And in my opinion, the Cherokee tan tastes a lot better than the Seminole. So if you, uh, if you like the Seminole, if you grow the Seminole, try carrot Cherokee tan and see, see how you like it. Compare the two and put in the comments whether you uh, come back and let us know that if you do try it, which one you prefer. All right, let's go on out and I want to show you the trellis beds. Michelle's got a little dill plant growing right here. Some rosemary in this basket. And these are just freezer baskets, the little baskets that come out of a deep freeze. And we just put those up there. <laughs> totally her idea. With some thyme, some oregano in these two baskets. Yeah, and the thing about growing these little baskets is you don't have to grow much. Herbs go a long way. You can snap that off, dry that out, and put those in jars and have it for years. Now, I don't know what to make of these green beans. We generally get three or four pickings. We picked our fourth crop yesterday. And I can't tell that with because of all the rain, if we're going to get more blooms on these things, if they're going to put on another crop. I think I'm going to give it a few days. I'm really tempted to come in here, pull these out, and then do another run of rattlesnake beans. Really like the way they perform for us. I want to come in here and pull all this grass out and get another crop of something going on, whether it's pole limas. Why don't you just do a second thing of the green beans to get you some more uh, cattle panels. Go buy some more cattle panels and, mm -hmm. and put up there. We might do that real soon. And maybe we do pole beans down to here and then come down here and we can do another crop of uh, pole llamas or, or pumpkin or a sweet potato or something down this way and then train the vines up. I got some in here that I skipped over and um, we're gonna just harvest the seeds off, off of these. I got some blooms right there. Those don't seem to be finished just yet. We may get another crop since we just got a good rain. Big old beans that are going to seed right now. Now look at here, we got one red bean. I don't know if this was a different variety that got mixed in, but it's really pretty or if this actually is a rattlesnake green bean. But we're gonna save these and we're gonna plant more of those and just see how they turn out. I think another variety of seed got dropped in there. All right, so that's it for the garden tour this morning. Maybe next time we take you around and we show you what's going on with our orchard trees. We've got pluots that are ripening off. We've already went through our nectarines and I think up next, we're going to have our peaches that will be getting ready here in a couple of weeks. So join us next time for a walk around the garden and, have, and bring your coffee along and we'll see what's growing. Hope you enjoy the video. And don't forget to keep growing, keep building, and always keep adventuring. And together, we're Farmington Famous. <laughs>